This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Ryan here and welcome back to our oral medicine series. This will be a relatively short video looking at the parathyroid glands, parathyroid hormone, and the disease states that can occur with malfunctioning parathyroid glands. So the parathyroid glands are these four tiny glands that are located on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland, two on the left lobe and two on the right lobe. They're made up of two types of cells called chief cells and oxyphil cells. The chief cells secrete parathyroid hormone, which regulates the amount of calcium in our bodies. The oxyphil cells have no known function. So parathyroid hormone has a few different effects on various tissues. For bone, the parathyroid hormone binds to osteoblasts to increase rank ligand and decrease osteoprotogerin, which activates osteoclasts, which of course destroy bone. At the kidneys, parathyroid hormone increases calcium reabsorption at the distal tubule and collecting duct and inhibits phosphate reabsorption. And finally, at the intestines, parathyroid hormone activates vitamin D, which promotes absorption of calcium in the intestines. In order to better understand these concepts, I came up with this equilibrium diagram to try and simplify the movement of calcium throughout the body. It's a bit oversimplified, I'll admit, but I think it really helps you see the big picture. So here we have the bones, blood, and the intestines. And we have PTH, parathyroid hormone, calcitonin, which is secreted by the thyroid gland we briefly mentioned in the last video, FGF23 is fibroblast growth factor 23, and then vitamin D down here. So basically how this equilibrium works is parathyroid hormone pulls calcium out of bone and puts it into blood, which will be very important when we think about hyperparathyroidism and hypoparathyroidism in just a little bit. Calcitonin does the opposite and puts calcium from the blood back into bone. One way to remember this is it tones down calcium levels in the blood. FGF23 promotes calcium and phosphate wasting. In other words, getting rid of calcium and phosphate from the body. Whereas vitamin D pulls calcium from the things that we eat and drink and brings it into our bloodstream. So again, just a basic overview of how calcium moves throughout the body. So let's talk about hyperparathyroidism. This involves the overproduction of parathyroid hormone. So we're removing too much calcium from bone and moving it into the bloodstream. Primary hyperparathyroidism is the most common of all these three types. It usually involves a benign tumor of the parathyroid gland, leading to hypercalcemia, too much calcium in the blood. It's typically treated by surgical removal of the tumor. Secondary hyperparathyroidism involves insufficient vitamin D or chronic renal failure, which leads initially to hypocalcemia, not enough calcium in the blood. And so, as a result, the parathyroid glands react by secreting more parathyroid hormone in order to compensate. This would be treated by correcting the underlying cause, either with vitamin supplementation or a renal transplant. And finally, tertiary hyperparathyroidism is when secondary hyperparathyroidism happens for a long time. So the glands become hyperplastic and even after the secondary hyperparathyroidism is treated, the baseline parathyroid hormone remains higher than it should be, leading again to hypercalcemia, and this would be treated by surgical removal of the hyperplastic tissue of the parathyroid glands. So how does this manifest in a dental patient? 
So if we're dealing with hyperparathyroidism, nine times out of 10, we're dealing with hypercalcemia, too much calcium in the blood. So the classic signs and symptoms of this include kidney stones, painful bones, which could manifest in osteoporosis, abdominal groans, which refers to constipation, nausea, and vomiting, and psychiatric moans, which involve fatigue, depression, and psychosis. So the nice way to remember this is stones, bones, groans, and moans, all rhyming together. Brown tumors are another thing that we can see in these patients. There are these giant cell lesions. They can be solitary radiolucencies as seen here, or there can be multiple radiolucencies. And they're basically broken down bone with blood accumulating in the pockets. There's often a generalized loss of lamina dura around the teeth. This salt and pepper radiographic appearance is due to the decreased trabecular pattern. And we often see elevated alkaline phosphatase levels in the blood. So all of these are possible results of an overproduction of parathyroid hormone. How about on the other end of the spectrum? We have hypoparathyroidism. So this is most commonly due to damage or removal of the parathyroid glands during a thyroidectomy. So this would be performed when the thyroid gland has to be removed in order to treat thyroid cancer, a goiter, or something like that. The parathyroid gland tissue would also be damaged or removed in the process. So without it, it can't secrete the parathyroid hormone that we would expect. So an underproduction of parathyroid hormone leads to an overaccumulation of calcium in the bone. So how does that manifest in a dental patient? Well, often results in hypocalcemia. The most common symptoms include paresthesia and tetany. Tetany refers to muscle spasms. You can see a radiopacity in the skull by the basal ganglia, as shown here. Hypoplasia of the enamel, late eruption of the teeth, dilaceration of roots, and increased radiopacity in the jaws are all possible oral manifestations of hypoparathyroidism. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link will be in the description. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.